Hey folks, this is Vince with Dad's Gaming Addiction, and today we're going to quickly review Starport Delta. This is a game that you can find on Steam for about 25 bucks. However, it is 50% off right now until about January 5th, 2021. So if you like what you see here, you may want to pick it up while it's 50% off. The developers, I think, had a hand in that too, just because there was a recent update. I believe it was called 1.1. It added new things to the tech tree and so on. So what is Starport Delta? Well, I covered this I want to say back in March or April of this year. And this is a, a space base game of sorts. You're creating this space station in space. And it's hex based. So whenever you put a building down, it'll typically cover some kind of radius. If it's a supply building, that is. Um, other buildings will feed off of those supply buildings. There are a number of different modes in this game. Uh, there's the standard tutorial. There's a campaign, which I believe spans across, I think, eight episodes. There's a sandbox that you can play in. There's these challenges. And I think there's roughly four of those, if I remember correctly. And then there's a custom game, which is what I like. You can set the environment color, um, whether or not there are pirates or building debris right. enabled. Oxygen there's building degradation, uh, meaning that you'll have to uh, repair buildings from time to time. Uh, you can build a, a repair depot, so as long as it's within range, it'll do it for you automatically. But you still have to pay money and uh, metal in order to repair the buildings. But anyway, you can control how often buildings do that. I think you can actually turn that off completely, which is nice if you want to more casual experience. On the financial end of the custom game, you can choose how many space bucks you start with, how many materials you start with, the tax rate, whether or not you can go into debt. Uh, on the construction side, you can choose your starting research level, what the research rate is, population growth rate, supply drop amount, any events. You can turn those off if you want to, or to low, medium, high. There's like pirate attacks, meteor showers, electrical storms, radiation bursts, and space worm attacks. So you're going to be trying to build this space station in space. And like I said, this, this game has like supply buildings and demand buildings. The supply buildings are things like power. Uh, you'll be able to provide power to surrounding hexes. You'll be able to provide, say, food or oxygen to surrounding hexes, and um, your residential structures will feed off of that. And that's the primary way to advance in this game in terms of money. Um, your, your citizens will pay taxes, so you have to put more housing buildings down. And when you do that, you know, you'll get more money income that way. But the buildings that you put down all have some sort of maintenance costs. So if you put down say a uh, power you know like three power buildings in a row when you don't need to because uh, you're overlapping power uh, hexes then you're gonna lose money because of ever-growing maintenance costs so you you have to strategically position these various structures so that you know, okay my, my power I've got food and oxygen they're supplying to this area here within these say eight hexes or whatever and I'm not going to put any of those three buildings down again within that radius because I'm covered there but I can go ahead and put residential here 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 and so on so you're strategically placing structures so that you're getting the most efficient use out of everything that you're putting down there is a research tree in this game and you'll be able to unlock upgrades for your supply buildings make their radiuses bigger for example you can unlock new buildings uh, there's a laser defense building like a turret platform and those will fend off pirate attacks uh, you can put down these shield generators which fend off meteor showers um, there's a uh, supply like there's a repair depot that you can put down and everything within its radius will be repaired automatically you don't have to do it manually, so as long as it has the money and the, the resources to do so. Um, metal and money being your primary resources in this game. Um, you'll be able to build, like, just these bridges. Like, they're, they're just, they don't serve any purpose except to expand your base a little bit. So if you don't want this cluttered look, you can, you know, you can put these, these structures down will extend. Um, they're just like connectors that just extend your base out a bit. Um, again, there's residential buildings you can put down. You can unlock a new research structure. I think that's part of uh, 1.1, the new update. But uh, that way you can earn research more quickly. Uh, you start with the ability to get 10 per tick or something like that. 
Um, apologies if you hear screaming upstairs. Uh, my girlfriend is recording or playing games with somebody. Anyway, um, <laughs> yeah, don't worry. It's We're safe here. It's fine. She's just very loud when she plays her games. Anyway, getting back into this, um, you've got this research value. It starts with 10, but you can put down, you can first research this research structure and then place it down and you'll earn more research over time. It's just a faster way to unlock more things in your tech tree. And there's uh, mining structures that you can put down to get more metal. And there's a trade hub. Trade hubs will let you take on contracts like um, this no name, this, this, this named uh, faction, which you never see. Uh, we'll give you um, 100 bucks in exchange for 300 metal, or I don't know. I'm just making up numbers, but you can you can exchange resources. Um, you can also do population trades and stuff like that. You know, uh, money for population and so on. Um, so yeah, there's also these little side quests that you don't have to do. And honestly, like they're okay in the first five minutes of the game, but they get really annoying after that. Um, a lot of it is like a Where's Waldo puzzle, like where It'll say, oh, you, you've got a stowaway on board, find them. So you're clicking on all of your buildings, and you're looking for the green population guy. Uh, like, you, it, in your housing complexes, you've got, like, little, little people icons, and they represent how many people are living there in that structure. And the green one is the one you're looking for, so you click on them, and then there's, like, a, a, a check mark up or, like, a red X. And that, that tells them, okay, do you want to kill this person off or exile them from the station or you forgive them? It doesn't matter. You get a different reward depending on what you choose, really. I, I've not seen any sort of negative side effect for choosing positive or negative, you know. So um, that's fine when you only have, say, eight or nine structures. But when you've got a huge honking space station and you're being asked to find something... Your click, 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 click. I, after after I had like 15 plus uh, structures in my, I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna not even look at that anymore. Like it's just, it became too tedious. I wish the game would be like, um, give you a hint on, okay, maybe it's like in the northwest part or like highlight an area. Like when you highlight the mission, highlight an area to where this person could be or where this event could be. That way I don't have to look through all 30, 40, 50 buildings that I have. Again, the larger your station, the harder it is for this person, you know, to find it, whatever you're looking for. Um, so yeah, I just, I, I don't like that particular, it's, it's nice, it's, it's a way to get like side money. But once you're rolling in it, you really don't need to do those side missions anymore. I mean, again, they're nice for the first couple of minutes to get started with resources, but after that it's just a nuisance. So I wish there was a way to fine tune that part of it like again highlight an area of like when you're when your space station reaches to 30 hex uh 30 hexes um the mission will highlight say 10 of possible locations where it could be like within a radius or something like that um that way i don't have to hunt through all these different hexes but anyway so what did i think of starport delta it's not bad um 25 bucks is kind of pushing it i think for what this game has to offer um, if you play this game on sandbox or in custom mode and put everything on easy, you'll see everything that there is to see within 5-10 minutes. Like, it's, it's, like, there's not a whole lot of structures in this game. You, again, you've got, like, four buildings that generate things for you. Power, oxygen, food, and mining. Then you've got your, your defense stuff, which is, like, your, your shield generators, your lasers, and then your repair depots. And then you've got things that generate money for you possibly like housing trade hubs science buildings uh, you can put down these retail centers and within a radius uh, it'll generate money based on the housing that you have in, in, in range uh, little parks that you can put down they do the same thing but within a smaller radius but yeah that's it like there's not a whole lot of substance to this game um it's it's one of those casual base building games that I, I say, like, it's fun to jump into for a little bit, but it's not going to hold my interest for very long because, again, I can blow through it fairly quickly. Now, that's just on the easier difficulty settings. On the harder modes, um, you know, the, the pirate events are more often. You've got this radiation attacking. Now, that's just RNG, though. I don't like that. Um, some of those events you cannot defend against, like the radiation, electrical discharges, and the like. I, the storms you can't block those from my understanding it's just you can you can stop pirate attacks with lasers 
You can stop meteor strikes with your shields, but that's it. The other events you cannot block against. So it's like bad RNG if you get hit uh, in a number of places. So like, the game inflates the difficulty by just increasing the frequency of these events. And I don't know, like, for 25 bucks, like, I hate to compare this game to FTL when FTL isn't anything like this. FTL is more of a roguelike. Um, but it, FTL is under 20 bucks and has a ton of content in it. Um, whereas this game, it's like there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, I want to say like, I don't know, 12 buildings that you can put down in total. Some of which you have to research through the tech tree. But like, there's not enough. I, I want to see more for my $25. Um, if I'm going to pay $25 for a base building game, it better hold my interest for longer than 10 minutes on any setting, and unfortunately it doesn't. Um, and again, it inflates the difficulty in ways on the harder difficulty settings that I just don't agree with. Um, so do I recommend this game? Only during a deep sale, honestly. Um, it, right now it's 50% off, it's $12.50. It, that's not bad. This, to me, this is a $10 to $15 game. Um, again, it's, it's, I think it's going to hit the more casual crowd on this one just because there is a limited number of buildings that you can construct. And, yeah, you can build the space station of your dreams, but, you know, you're going to be building the same structures over and over and over again. Um, I, I was hoping for more variety, you know what I mean? But as it stands now, like, it's just, it's meh. Like, if there was, like, a sideways thumb recommendation, that would be it. Um, I, I don't think it's worth 25 bucks. It's more of a 10 to $15 game. So I would say recommend, uh, I would recommend possibly buying it during a sale, but only if you're into casual space station builders. It feels more like a, a mobile game. You know what I mean? Like something I could like, turn on for five minutes or not. Uh, the save feature is broken right now as part of the game. So yeah, it's just, there's just some things about this game that just turn me if it looks interesting to you, then yes, by all means, pick it up for us. If you guys haven't already subscribed to me on Twitch and YouTube, that way you can stay up to date with any new content I happen to publish. This is Vince, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.